Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, who the world ignorantly called God, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly called Jesus. So, the title of this lesson is going to be um, Christianity versus the Gods of Egypt. And I'd like to send double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth. Salutations to the hopeful elect spread around the four corners of the earth doing the job in truth and sincerity. And the reason why I'll be doing this lesson is because one of my younger sisters requested for this lesson, saying that in school they started teaching them about the gods of Egypt, which is something that got me baffled a bit. You know, be teaching these younger ones in school, uh, you know, it's doctrine of, doctrines of idolatry, you know, things that the most I don't want us to actually, you know, go into the left hand knowledge. So before I start quickly, it's, I'm going to sort of slack here, I'm going to read from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 3, you know, which quotes, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. That thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor give them nor serve them. Salakia. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto the thousands unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments so right here in this verse it's clear the most times telling us we shouldn't serve any other god nor make any graven images or likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or in the earth beneath that is in the water under the earth, you know, we shouldn't bow down to these things, you know. So I found this article on this website, Egyptian website, and I found it meant so interesting that I'm going to actually base my lesson on this article because it actually explains, you know, the history of how Christianity and Egypt and of how Christianity is, you know, is very similar to that of the Egyptian belief. So this is um this this was written you know on the 11th of April 2017 so I'll start reading you know the documented history of Egypt dates back to the age of codification about 3200 before Christ and more and over more than 5300 years of its written history although the country has Although the country was subjected to military occupation dozens of times over this long period, Egypt changed its religious doctrine only twice. The first was in the first century with Christianity and the second with Islam in the seventh century. In fact, Egypt has succeeded in eject injecting both Islam and Christianity with many of its ancient beliefs. In the end, the essence of the ancient Egyptian doctrine was centered on faith in the resurrection after death, reckoning paradise and hell, all of which are essential components of all the Abrahamic religions. Okay. Perhaps we need to explain how Egypt created its own version of Islam in a separate article. But for Christianity, the Egyptian touches are very influential in the religion that has spread worldwide. They bear the authentic Egyptian features that the country's people have embraced since ancient times until it appeared it was Christian before the birth of Christ thousands of years ago. So here we can, you know, we can see how um, the Egyptians actually had their, their belief you know, they had their belief, they had um, 
you see you can see the egyptian um the history of the egyptians you know it goes way back 3200 before christ okay so they had their own beliefs and everything but you know christianity was introduced in the first century okay christianity was introduced to them in the first century and later in the seventh century islam was introduced to the egyptians and you see here what's explaining is the egyptians didn't find any problem in you know embracing these two religions because they were very very similar to what they already practiced you know so you know it's as it had to do about with the resurrection after death you know reckoning paradise and hell and all of which were components of all these of all the abrahamic religions like christianity and and islam so let's go for the more perhaps we need okay we already read this slack here so let me read from you know from this paragraph right here perhaps we need to explain how egypt created its own version of islam in a separate article article Okay, but for Christianity, the Egyptian touches are very influential in the religion that has spread worldwide. They bear the authentic Egyptian features that the country's people have embraced since ancient times until it appeared it was Christian before the birth of Christ thousands of years. You see, so what they already believed in, you know, it appeared to be christianity that was brought to them you know so they already they already were practicing these things you know thousands of years ago before christianity came and it seemed like you know it was already part of their religion because it had so much so many features you know in common so let's go furthermore yeah here is a depiction to just show you um the christians you know most especially the catholic sect you know they they honor the mother of christ you know so-called christ okay the mother the mother of christ you know which is his real name is yahweh shai okay so that's you see you can see on the left and the egyptians already had this belief way before christianity was introduced to them you know they believed you know in this deity she was a virgin she had this child all like that by herself you know so we're going to go into that later so that's actually what christianity is all about the birth of this you know this special child by you know this virgin mother she was con she she she, she had no no relationship with any man but she just somehow you know got this baby you know through some kind of spirit and the child was born by a virgin you know which all this doctrine is actually false and it's not even biblical so we're going to go that late going to that later let's keep reading christianity which appeared in the first century was considered another version of judaism okay and the vast pagan ocean which extends to the roman empire the early Christians were seen only as a group of Jewish sects who failed to establish their kingdom at the hands of their leader, the Savior, who rebelled against the Roman state. So he was punished like one. So you see, this, this verse right here is very, 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 very eye-opening, you know. So here over here, it's trying to explain to us that, you know, the Jews actually, the, 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 the followers of, you know, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly called Jesus, his followers at the beginning, they were recognized by a sect, you know, um, who failed, you know, after, after their savior was crucified, after their savior was killed, okay, he was hung. So these actually were the real Jews, you know, they were... You know, after the death of Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly called Jesus, you know, the Romans actually went into their place, into their house, invaded Israel. You know, that's seventy A.D. You know, um, seventy after the death of Yahweh Shai, they invaded 
they invaded jerusalem and destroyed the whole city you know caused a lot of problems you know and the people had to flee away you know they were spread all around the place many were taken slaves many had to run down into africa most especially west africa um so these actually were the real jews you know so they were seen as you know this sect of people who failed after the death of their savior so the interesting thing is um this roman empire they they got frustrated you know because they tried all their best to keep persecuting these people and make sure they don't promote the truth which is you know yahweh shy who the world ignorantly called jesus you know and the real jews being the the the, 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 the so-called negroes the native americans the native indians you know and the latinos so they actually created a counterfeit religion you know which was already in place and try to put it together with what's going to entice these people and tell and present to them a new religion to be like hey okay we actually want to worship the same god you worship okay so we're going to live in peace together so they came up with this crafty crafty religion and created christianity out of it to entice the people i don't know if this point is really there are many brothers you know who had made videos on this so i just really just want to pick out a few points and not go really deep into it so let's keep reading christianity crystallized in form of an independent religion and doctrine separate from judaism only after passing through egypt we give it three of its most important components and you cannot deny it christianity has three important components in which we'll go into right now this component actually comes from egypt the egyptian religion first of it is the cross okay the early christians did not use cross as a symbol because if we go straight right here in exodus it's really going to contradict what the truth is all about over here we can read thou shall have no other gods before me thou shall not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under so you can see that already contradicts christianity the christianity is based on one of this the crosses okay so let's go into the history of the cross the early christians did not use the cross as a symbol until the fourth century after the death of yahweh shai christians in the ancient world used the fish symbol each each tint okay these were the christians actually who were pagans you know you see they used the fish symbol you know so we can really go deep into the his this history also of the fish symbol how it came to place so you see these christians actually they were not the real people of the most high whereas many of the real people of the most high were were deceived in getting into this religion of christianity okay in greek the oldest known christian symbol okay i'm going to skip that so let's go, go go on as for the symbol of the cross used by christian throughout the world it is the development of an ancient egyptian symbol ank which carries the meaning of eternity or life after death and all on under under here you can see the image right there of the cross the egyptians were already making use of the symbols you know time immemorial before the before christianity came to be okay they were already making use of the symbols you know which meant you know life it means um eternity or life after death okay so let's go on in the coptic museum in cairo there are many archaeological evidence of the evolution of the use of this symbol and its adoption by christian by egyptian christians as a decorative element at the beginning and then as a symbolic value associated with the eternity of christ and defying death you see so they just somehow came up 
you know they already had this sign this sign of the cross that meant eternity so they just somehow you know mixed it up with you know the eternity of yahweh shy who the world ignorantly called jesus you know because he rose up from the dead so they just you know put it all together and you know mixed it and went on like that let's keep reading in the Coptic Museum in Cairo, there are some tombstones that have a fascinating development of the use of the symbol of Ankh, which is the cross, which was traditionally placed as a cell for the Ra boat in the other life to cross the sea of darkness. So you see, the cross actually, <laughs> the Egyptians were using it as an anchor, you know, an anchor is what holds a boat. You know, when you want to pack a boat, if you don't put an anchor, it just keeps floating and goes away. So you need an anchor to make the boat stable. So they said, you know, the ankh was traditionally placed as a sail for the Ra boat. Ra is an Egyptian god. Okay. So they say the boat and the other life to cross the sea of darkness. So you see, Christianity is is mixed with this you know pagan religion so after christianity the first christians in egypt also placed on their graves the ras cell boat but with a slight change in the form of the ankh symbol to become closer to the shape of the cross which that's what christians also do on their grave on their graveyards you know you have the crosses and all those things so this is actually the Egyptian form of idol worshiping, which was introduced, which which actually you know took another form as Christianity, you know. So let's keep reading. The evolution of the symbol of the cross from the pharaonic symbol Ankh is closer to the archaeological study that the common hypothesis that the symbol of the cross refers to the instrument of torture used to crucify Christ. Okay, the ancient Roman cross that Christ was supposed to have been crucified was T-shaped, which was different from the shape of the known cross. So you can see here, later they took the cross and they they they, they actually, they, 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 how should I put the word? I'm looking for the right word. They, they turned the cross. Okay, no, it's not like they turned the cross. They were, they were just looking for ways to justify their pagan beliefs, which is this Egyptian belief. We already went through it, you know, that the cross is used by the pagan Egyptians. Okay, so now Christianity is trying to look for every way to, you know, to fix it itself, to fix itself with this pagan religion. So they actually said, okay, the cross represents the, the place of crucifixion where Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly called Jesus, was crucified on a cross, you know, which it, it, wasn't, it doesn't matter if it was... Well, let me just ask you a question. If one of your friends was shot with an AK-47, in order for you to remember him, do you need to, you know, start worshipping the AK-47 and make the AK-47 a symbol? So you see, it doesn't really make any sense. So this is what Christianity is all about. They now took the ancient Egyptian Ankh, which is the cross, and mixed it with their own belief. Now we're going to the second one, which is the Trinity. The oldest creed that Egypt had known for thousands of years was based on the Holy Trinity. The Father God Osiris the mother goddess Isis and the son Horus, whom Isis bore without defiling himself. Sounds familiar. Yeah, that's what Christianity is all about. They say Jesus was born by a virgin, you know, in which it is not even biblical. I will have to go through that in another lesson. You know, there is the verse, I think, in the book of Matthew, where you have the genealogy of Yahweh child, the word ignorantly calls Jesus, who right there is telling you he is the seed of David. He is the seed of David. And when you come across the word, the Virgin Mary or whatever in the Bible right there, 
if you go to its root word, you can see how those people change it. The right word is not virgin. I think betrothed or so, but that's another lesson. But if you want to know more about this, the apostles of the great millstones, you know, did great lessons on this multiple times and explained and go really deep about, you know, the deception of the virgin birth. So you can see Christianity actually is, let's say it's a camouflage of the Egyptian of the Egyptian religion, you know, who they believe in the father god Osiris, the mother goddess Isis, and the son Horus, whom Isis bore without defiling himself. So the mother was virgin, she just, Horus was born without defiling himself. Does that sound familiar? It sounds like Christianity to me, you know, but the Bible also still proves it wrong that. Yahabashai, who the world ignorantly called Jesus, was of the seed of David. His genealogy is there. And when you get come across the word the seed, the seed, um, if you go to its Greek root word, you know, it takes you to sperma. It has to do with, you know, you know, it's a natural birth. It's a natural birth. It had nothing to do with, you know, angels coming to make Mary conceive or something. Nothing like that. It's all deception. This is where it comes from. It comes from the Egyptian pagan religion. Okay, so let's move on. In fact, all the early Christians preserved their original faith while introducing some new details. So you can see. Soon, the Isis temples spread in Egypt were transformed into churches. You can see, whereas the most eye tells us that it does not dwell in temples built with stone and hands of men, we actually as people are the churches, you know. It has nothing to do with these buildings. The most eye, the, the head is his footstool, you know. The head is his footstool. So would you, <laughs> well, Christianity is just, um, how should I put it? It's Christianity is hypocrisy, you know. I pray the most high opens the eyes of our brothers who are still captured in that, you know, religion of um evil and destruction. I pray they, they wake up and find out that what all what they actually follow is Egyptian, is Egyptian, is the Egyptian pagan practice. So now the third one is going to be. So let's finish soon. The Isis temple spread in Egypt were transformed into churches. Okay. The statues of Isis carrying a child Horus metamorph metamorphosed to the Virgin Mary holding the Christ, which later spread with Christianity to all parts of the world. So you see how evil these people are, how evil Christianity is. It is just a cover up for this pagan religion. So what they did is, you know, these statues that they had before, which were the statues of um, their goddess Isis carrying a child Horus, you know, they turned it to the Virgin Mary carrying Christ, holding Christ, which the, the Bible never even, you know, the Bible has never, you know, how should I put magnified Mary for giving birth to Yahweh Shai or that way, the way Christianity, you know, just takes it all, most especially um, the Catholics. But what other, um, other um, Christian sects don't understand is they all came out of the Vatican. They all came out of Catholicism. They have the same belief. They believe um, Jesus was born by a virgin. They believe, um, they believe in the Trinity. It, everything is just, you know, it has to do with the Egyptian pagan worship. So let's go on the religious order. The first monk in history was the Egyptian saint, Anthony the Great, who was born in Thebes in 251 and lived for more than a hundred years. He was the first to establish the monastery monastic system and the rule of residence in the monastery okay so let's go on i don't want to keep this lesson too long in fact christianity in its early form did not know monasticism and monasteries 
okay it evolved from judaism which did not welcome the idea of an unmarried man or being apart from the world even if what if it was a clergyman the idea of virginity among the ancient egyptian priest male and female was common and the great temples were attached to some monasteries which where some of the priests and priestesses devoted themselves fully to worship austerity isolation and vir virginity okay so you can see you know this this is exactly what the 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 catholics they they practice you know they practice this um um they go they practice this um they worship this austerity and isolation and virginity which is not which is not biblical it's not biblical okay it's not biblical so you can see that christianity this site actually it has few information but i just chose it because it had everything compacted you know it, it debunks you know the origin of christianity and you know puts so much doubt in christianity so dear brothers and sisters out there looking for the truth you know christianity has nothing to do with the truth rather it turns you away from the truth it's a camouflage of pagan worship it's a camouflage of pagan worship. I'm going to leave the link to this website in the description. So let's go straight into some, some scriptures. So we are going to read from the book of um, Colossians 2.8. Okay. Colossians 2.8. Colossians 2 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after the anointed. The word Christ, if you go to its strong definition, you know, it comes from the word Christos, okay? You know, it means anointed that is the messiah okay so you see the right word there is going to be the anointed you know the word comes from the greek you know christos so here i'm going to take you to something else so you see the deception of christianity in itself so the word itself is not christ okay it is it means the anointed okay it means the anointed so let's now see how we came up with the with christ and the bible and all those things you know so the word of the most high how about shem in itself which is the scriptures the bible and you know the apocryphas they are all mostly correct and you know it takes the spirits of the most high to help you to understand them the chosen ones get the message they understand it because the message isn't meant for everybody so let me take you somewhere else. The image that you see here is, you can see right here on the top, I wrote Christus Serapis. That's the name of this image. And let's quickly go straight up to a little history of, you can see this image looks so much like the Jesus that's been depicted, you know. That's actually what this image is all about. The Jesus that you see is Christus Serapis, okay? And let me tell you who this Christus Serapis is. So let's go straight up to Wikipedia. And if you put down the Serapis, you know, that's the image of the Jesus that's pushed in churches, in most of the, all the churches, okay? So Serapis, okay, Koine Greek, later form or Serapis earlier from okay, blah, blah, blah. let's see Osiris. You see, you see, you can see right there, you know, Serapis, Koine Grip, later form or Serapis, earlier form, originally demotic, okay, Coptic, Usapi, Osiris Apis is a Greco Egyptian deity. The cult of Serapis was pushed forward during the 3rd century BC on the order of Greek pharaoh 
Ptolemy 1, okay? So, I am just going to stop there because I wouldn't go too much into his history. You can, you know, Google it up, go to Wikipedia and read more and see the evil man this Serapis was, okay? But what I really want to point out to you, you can see he is linked to Osiris. Can you see? He is linked to Osiris, okay? And he was pushed forward during the third century before christ on the order of greek pharaoh ptolemy the first now let's go see who this ptolemy the first is and i'm going to show you the reason why they took out some books from the from the bible because there is so much truth right there in the bible they had to take out some books the first king james version had other i think it had other other books in it you know they took it out but if you you go through some apps like this one that i have you see the king james version it has if you go to its contents if you go to its contents you know it has extra books you see which are the apocryphas which were actually part of the original king james but later they were taken away okay so i am going to read from the book of first maccabees chapter one right there and now let's go and see who this who this, you see, Ptolemy, he's, you see, you see all this, he's, and see, they said he came at the third century BC, okay, this actually was the time that um, Alexander the Great was in rule, but this is after his death, you know, his kingdom was divided into four, and Ptolemy actually is the one who took hold of the zone of Egypt, okay, the zone of Egypt, Ptolemy was the one in charge, so what Ptolemy actually did, let's go into the scriptures to see, so this is the book of Maccabees chapter 1 verse 1, I'm going to read, and it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Ketim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and the Medes, that he, re, he, he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece, and made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth. So you see, Alexander the Great, son of Philip, was a Macedonian, okay, who came out of the land of Ketim. But if we go deep into this, you'll find out that he was an Edomite, okay. So let's move on. That's going to be another lesson for another day. Many brothers already had lessons on this. You can just scroll through and go search GMS, the Great Millstone teachings on Alexander the Great. You know, the apostles did wonderful lessons, eye-opening lessons, deeper than what I can come with. So now let's go on. In verse 3, it, it, it quotes, And went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations, in so much that the earth was quiet before him, whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up, and he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. They were paying taxes unto him. Okay. And after these things, he fell sick and perceived that he should die. Wherefore, he called his servants such as were honorable and had been brought up with him from his youth and parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive so alexander reigned 12 12 years and then died and his servants bear rule one everyone in his place and after his death they all put crowns upon themselves so did their sons after them many years, and evil were multiplied in the earth. So take note, evils were multiplied in the earth in the reigns of this people. Okay, and there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus, son named Epiphanes, son of Antioch the king, who had been an hostage at Rome, and he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the greeks okay so well here the point is you see when these people were reigning okay 
they ran the world became very wicked and that's exactly when the edomites went into power okay so you see let's take notes of this name antiochus okay okay antiochus now let's go back to what we were reading so you see this ptolemy right here hmm? it's ptolemy if we go into his you see you can see alexander the great he was one of the companions of alexander the great okay he was one of the companions of alexander the great and he was awarded um he was awarded um he was awarded with the with egypt he was the one in rule of egypt okay during his rule you know iniquities and sin filled the earth so if you read more about him and go down you see from his roots from his roots came ptolemy you can see his roots came ptolemy now if you now go this is ptolemy right here you see ptolemy let me see you see right here ptolemy one may have married ties his mistress during the life of alexander he is known to have married the persian noble woman and in on alexander's order he later married a eh, daughter of him eh, okay but you can see ptolemy you know he married his own cousin as well <laughs> he married he, he did a lot of iniquities and this ptolemy from his roots came let's go back you see serapis the image of the so-called jesus you know the false deity that is his image right here you see he comes from ptolemy you see from ptolemy so you can see how christianity has been an instrument of destruction and deceit where they make you worship the wrong image instead of the true image of the most high you can see so this is just a little history about you know when you come across this image that you see right there you know it's written here this white man is not my savior yeah he's right you see the image actually comes from this demon deity this demon egyptian deity known as serap christus serapis his name was christus serapis so they had to, you know, incorporate his name with the new name that they gave our Savior, whose true name is Yahabashai. They turned his name to Jesus Christ. You know, how can it be a Hebrew and later come up with a Greek name? Is it done? But you see, my Christian brothers, when you talk to them, they be like, no, no. They don't go through researches. Just research this thing out and see. This is exactly what the book of Second Timothy is saying study to show thyself approved before god study to show thyself approved the book of osea chapter 8 verse i think chapter 2 verse 8 over i know in the book of osea it quotes my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge as thou has rejected me i'll reject thee also we don't go deep into history so we are easily brainwashed so you see where you they came across all this image of the new jesus so you can see same image this is actually the image of ptolemies okay you can see this is serapis you know <laughs> it's a blasphemy if jesus christ wasn't a historical person where did he come from who created him how does one go about creating a god anyway so you see this is the image they give to you as jesus but this guy right here was a demon he was a devil he caused a lot of atrocities. I think he married his own sisters as well. He did a lot of atrocity, you know, in which we can even go deeper into this, which links to the family of the Borgia. But that's going to be for another lesson. You can see it's a demon. This is his demon. You see the statue of Serapis, you know, his face they put as Jesus of today. So this is what the Christians worship, you know plus in plus they worship all this trinity and everything the crosses and all those bullshit cock and bull bs you know they all come from pagan egyptian worship now let's quickly go into 
another scripture right there let's go to the book of judges 2 17. the book of slakia judges 2 17. so as we can read right here and yet they would not hearken unto their judges but they went a warring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them they turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in obeying the commandments of the lord but they did not so you see this is something they 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 the Israelites have always done. We are stiff-necked people. We don't go and make researches for ourselves. We get carried away easily by the gods of all the nations. They are fascinators. Things that are not ours, they are fascinators. You can read even in um, um, the story of Moses when he went up to get the Ten Commandments. It was a way just for a short while. They requested another god. Before he came down, they already built you know, a calf image. All those stuffs they learned from Egypt while they were in bondage. Does it make any sense to you? Does it connect? Oh, dear brothers and sisters, you need to wake up from this false religion. Okay. Because Christianity is actually a false religion. So there are lots of there are lots of um precepts, you know, that prove Christianity being wrong. Deuteronomy eleven. 16 let me just speak up this last scripture and i think i'm going to close after this deuteronomy sorry it was deuteronomy 11 16 11 16 so you see take heed to yourselves that your hearts be not deceived and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them why do you think the most high is going to put all this in the scriptures you take heed of yourself that your hearts be not deceived and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them christians are being deceived in a mass scale you all need to come out of this deception christianity is not is not right for you it is poison it is worship it is it is one of the most evil religions so far if you believe the son of the most high yahweh shai was conceived by a virgin you're being lost it's not biblical he is from the seed of david from the tribe of judah you all are worshiping different things that you don't know they go into the church and sings and then do different clap make noise and do different doctrines that are off the scriptures come on people so now you can see how how christians are being lured to worship you know a false image that they don't even know about and Plus that, there are lots of videos, you know, telling us the description of the Most High. One is, um, I think it's in Revelation. Salakia. It's in the book of Revelation. I think one. Um, I think it's in the verse 18. Okay. This is the description of the son of the most high, Yahweh Shai, who you ignorantly call Jesus. He's not a white man and he does not have straight hair like this false, where well, I lost it, Christus. I lost it right there. He does not have straight hair like this pagan deity, demon God that they put before you. This is not the image of the most the son of the most eye. The son of the most eye is different. He's not a white man. You see, I'm going to read from verse 14. Okay. His head and his hair were white like wool. As white as snow. Who are the group of people with woolly hair? The Negroes. We have woolly hair. He was from the tribe of Judah. He was going to be a Negro. He had woolly hair, as white as snow, and his eyes were as 
a flame of fire. His eyes were red. Usually the Negroes, they get red eyes. When they're drunk, when they're hangry, they get red eyes. And his feet like onto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. So come on, that's the description. They said his feet were like onto fine brass. What's the color of fine brass? Let's go quickly and look up fine brass. Fine brass. <laughs> Come on, this is the color of brass. Okay. <laughs> this is the color of brass. Okay. And they said, as if they burned in a furnace. It looked even more darker because they, they were burned in a furnace. Come on, people. Come on, wake up. Wake up, sleeping sons of Jacob. Wake the heck up and come out of Christianity. There is no much so much time. There's not so much time for you to, to keep you know messing around. The true son of the most high, whose name is Yahweh Shai, is returning soon. Because you know, all prophecies are being fulfilled, and you see things are going really fast now. So I hope you all was edified. I hope I was able to make some few points, and I prayed most high Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai opens the eyes of the sons of Jacob, is elect, those who are meant to understand this truth. I pray the most I opens your eyes and turns your heart back to him and gives you the understanding to understand the scriptures. With this said, I'd love to say Shalawam, you know, Kala Lahayam La, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem Ruka Kadash. And the language I just spoke is the true language which is known as the Lashawan Kadash which means all oh, praises to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Peace out. All oh, praises and thanks to the Most High. Salutations to all the hopeful elect spread around the globe. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, the true men of God who have taught me this truth. Shalom. Peace out.